how to create Kubernetes K8 clusters on DigitalOcean. If you haven't created a DigitalOcean account yet, then you can use my referral link at the very top here to create one. My referral link will give you $200 in free DigitalOcean cloud credits to try out their services. I'll put my referral link in the video description below so you can click on it for your convenience. You can either sign up by email, your GitHub account, or your Google account. Now I have already signed up to DigitalOcean, so I'm going to be signing in by clicking on sign in at the top right hand corner here. Once you've signed in, you'll be in your DigitalOcean project dashboard. To create a Kubernetes cluster, you can either click on Kubernetes on the left hand side here, or you can click on the green create button, which I'm going to do, and then look for Kubernetes. This DigitalOcean service will create Kubernetes clusters. First, we'll need to select a version of DigitalOcean Kubernetes. By default, the latest version of DigitalOcean Kubernetes is already pre-selected. However, if you want an older version of DigitalOcean Kubernetes, simply click on this drop-down arrow and select the appropriate version that you want. DigitalOcean Kubernetes always recommends the latest version, so I'm going to be going with the latest version, which is the recommended version. Next, we'll need to choose the data center region for our Kubernetes cluster. Now, if you want a GPU Kubernetes cluster, you'll need to take the following note at the bottom here into consideration, which says GPU are supported in Tor 1, which stands for Toronto 1, and NYC 2, which stands for New York 2 data center regions. Now, because GPU Kubernetes clusters is a relatively new service, it's only available at the time of recording of this video in these two regions. However, I'm sure in the future, DigitalOcean will expand to more regions, and this note might disappear as DigitalOcean may have expanded to all regions that it has available. So I'm just going to give you an example of selecting one of these data center regions so that you can see how it looks like. So I'm going to click on this drop down arrow here to get a list of data center regions. And I'm going to be going with NYC2, which is right here. So I'm just going to click on it to select it. And now I'm going to scroll down to where it says choose cluster capacity. And underneath you'll see three tabs. First tab says shared CPU, next is dedicated CPU, and the last one to the right here says GPU. So I'm going to click on GPU just so you can see how it looks like. And as you can see, you have the ability to choose your machine type and your node plan for your GPU. Now GPU Kubernetes clusters are very expensive. And this is just a video demonstration. I don't need all this computing power. So I'm going to scroll back up to the top to where I need to choose my data center region once again. I'm going to click on this drop down arrow. And instead, I'm going to be going with New York City 1, NYC 1. Once you've chosen your data center region, scroll down until you see where it says VPC network. Underneath that, you should see size pod and service networks. It's important to keep in mind that network subnets can't be changed after creating the cluster. By default, size network subnets for me is already pre-selected, which will allow DigitalOcean to assign non-overlapping subnets and size the network. This is a recommended setting by DigitalOcean. Underneath that, you can configure your own network subnet sizes by clicking on this circle here. Here you can adjust the pod subnet size by clicking on this drop-down arrow and also the service subnet size by clicking on this drop-down arrow and selecting the your desired sizes. This will then determine your pod network range prefix and your service network range prefix. Now I want to keep things simple for this video demonstration, so I'm going to be going with size network subnets for me, which is a recommended setting by DigitalOcean. So I'm going to click on it to select it. Now we'll need to choose our Kubernetes cluster capacity. First though, we'll need to choose a node pool name. So as you can see, the current default name is pool dash and then a bunch of random numbers and letters. I'm going to delete the random numbers and letters and I'm going to keep pool dash and then I'm going to give my node pool name the following name, ka-test. So our node pool name is pool dash ka-test. Scroll down a bit further until you see where it says shared CPU and dedicated CPU. Dedicated CPU is more expensive. So I recommend starting with shared CPU. Click on it if this tab isn't already selected. Next, we'll need to choose our machine type, which is our droplet type. Click on the drop down arrow. As you can see, you've got a choice between basic regular SSD, basic premium Intel NVMe SSD, or basic premium AMD NVMe SSD. Now the premium versions are much faster, have faster CPUs and offer faster storages, but are also more expensive. For this video demonstration, I'm going to be going with basic. Next, we'll need to select our node plan. So click on this arrow. You can select your desired node plan. I'm just going to stick with the $24 a month per node plan. Underneath, you can check mark set node pool to auto scale, which means when your resources used by your apps running on your Kubernetes cluster exceed the node pool specs, you can allow it to scale to accommodate the new resources being used. So I'm going to check mark this. So the minimum amount of nodes can go all the way to one. However, I'm going to keep it at three and the maximum amount of nodes is what you want it to eventually scale to if your app or website grows significantly and you want it to just auto scale and update the resources for you to match the required resources needed to run your apps. Now I'm going to keep this at five. So at minimum, it will start off with three and at maximum, it will go to five. 
nodes. And then you can see the cost of the nodes underneath. So at the start, it will start at this price. And eventually, if it ever auto scales to the maximum amount of nodes, it will go to this price. Once you've configured your node pool, scroll down until you see where it says finalize. Look for where it says name and then choose a name for your cluster. So I'm going to delete all the pre-typed information in here and I'm going to call my cluster KA-test. Once you've chosen a name, scroll down all the way to the bottom and then click on create cluster. Your Kubernetes cluster will then begin being created. I'll be back with you once this Kubernetes cluster is up and running. Okay, I'm back. And as you can see, our Kubernetes cluster has been created. As you can see, we're currently in the overview tab and we've got our getting started check mark list. We've got the first check mark for creating a Kubernetes cluster. We still have to connect to Kubernetes, verify connectivity. And then in the next video, I'm going to show you how to deploy a workload, such as a one-click install app available on DigitalOcean's marketplace, such as WordPress. Before we go through these steps and specifically step two to authenticate our cluster, we're first going to need to create the personal access token for this authentication. Go to the left-hand side and scroll down to the bottom until you see where it says API. Right-click on API and click on open link in a new tab and a new tab will open. You'll be taken to cloud.digitalocean.com slash account slash API slash tokens. I'll put this link in the video description below so that you can click on it to make this video easier to follow. Once here, you'll be on the applications and API. Click on the tokens tab if you're not in there already and under where it says personal access tokens, click on generate new token. Enter a token name. So I'm going to call it KA-test-token. Once you've chosen a name, look for where it says expiration, click on the drop down arrow and click on no expire. Scroll down until you see where it says scopes. Here we'll need to select how the receiver will be able to access and use DigitalOcean API. Currently it's on custom scopes. However, we're going to change this to full access. So click on full access to grant access to all scopes based on your current role permissions. Once you've selected full access, click on generate token. Your token will then be successfully created. You can see it right here called K8-test-token. It was created six seconds ago and the scopes are read and write. Underneath that, you can see it says your new personal access token. And this secret won't be shown again for your security. So copy the secret right here by clicking on the copy button right next to it and then save it somewhere locally. So I'm going to save it in my notepad, which is a text editor. So I'm just going to minimize my browser to be taken to my desktop. I'm going to double click on notepad. I'm going to right click and click on paste. And there we go, it's in our notepad now. We'll come back to this later. For now, let's go back to our browser. Great, so we now have created our Kubernetes cluster and a personal access token to authenticate our Kubernetes cluster. Next, we'll need to set up a DigitalOcean droplet, which will be the controller of our K8 cluster. I'm creating this droplet, which is a cloud server essentially, because I want to keep all my activity in the cloud. So let's create our droplet or cloud server to be our Kubernetes cluster controller. Navigate to the top here to where it says create, click on it and click on droplets. Choose a region for your droplets so my Kubernetes is New York. So I'm going to go with New York for my droplet and I'm going to select the data center as NYC1 as that's also where my K8 cluster is based. This is just a preference. You can pick any region you want. Scroll down until you see where it says OS. I like to run with Ubuntu. So I'm going to click on Ubuntu and then the version, I'm going to click on this and I'm going to go with the LTS version 24.04 LTS. I'm going to scroll down until I see where it says choose size. I'm going to click on shared CPU, which is the basic plan. And then for the CPU options, I'm going to go with regular as this is just a video demonstration. And I'm going to go with the $6 a month plan for one gigabyte of RAM, one CPU, 25 gigabyte SSD disk, and a thousand gigabytes or one terabyte of bandwidth transfer. Scroll down until you see where it says choose authentication method. I'm going to click on password and then I'm going to enter a root password for my droplet. Make sure the password that you create meets all the password requirements. So I'm just going to enter my password now. Scroll all the way down to the bottom until you see where it says host name. So we're going to give our droplet an identifying name. So I'm going to delete what's already pre-typed in here. And then I'm going to call my droplet K8-test-controller. This implies that this droplet is going to be my controller for my Kubernetes cluster. Once you've given your droplet a name, click on create droplet. While our droplet is being created, we're going to install an SSH client and this SSH client will be used to log into our droplet and control our Kubernetes cluster using commands through it. Open up another tab in your browser. I'm just going to click on my other tab here and navigate to putty.org. Once you're here, click on download putty. Choose the putty installer that's relevant for your OS. In my case, it's 64-bit Windows. So it would be this one right here. If putty isn't compatible with your operating system, you'll need to download an alternative SSH client. Now I've already got putty installed, so I'm not going to go through this process of installing putty once again 
description. However, if you'd like a step-by-step -step video on how to install Putty, I'll put a link to a video of mine in the video description below, which will take you step-by-step -step through the installation of Putty. Let's go back to our previous tab to check on the status of our controller droplet. And as you can see, our droplet is now up and running, and you can also see our Kubernetes cluster below it in the same project called Tutorials. Now let's log into our droplet. So click on the copy button next to our droplet's IP address to copy the IP address, minimize your browser, and minimize your text editor for the time being. Locate Putty. As you can see, there's a Putty shortcut on my desktop here. If you don't have the Putty shortcut, you can search for it on your PC and then open up the app. I'm going to open up the app by simply double clicking on it. Under where it says host name or IP address, right click on the text box and paste in the IP address of your droplet. Once you've done that, click on open. You'll then be greeted with this Putty security alert, which notifies you that the host key is not cached in the registry. You have no guarantee that this server is the computer you think it is. Of course, we know that this is our digital Ocean droplet, so we are going to be proceeding with connecting to it. So you have the option to cancel, connect once, or accept. I'm going to click on accept to add the key to Putty's cache and carry on connecting. I'm going to maximize the Putty terminal window, and at the top left of your terminal window, it says login as. I'm going to be logging in as root, so type root, hit enter, and then for your password, enter the root password that you created for your Digital Ocean droplet. Once you've done that, hit enter on your keyboard. You'll then be logged into your Digital Ocean droplet. Open back up your browser and go back to the overview tab of your Kubernetes cluster. Click on get started. Look for where it says connecting and managing this cluster and scroll down a bit. You have the option between automated, which is recommended or manual. I'm going to be going with the automated form of authentication and connecting to my cluster. So this command here automatically renews your cluster certificate. We'll run this in just a second, but first we'll need to install the program called Doctl or D-O-C-T-L. To do this, open back up your putty terminal window and type the following command, snap space install space D-O-C-T-L, Doctor. Once you've typed this in, hit enter on your keyboard. All right, and as you can see, Doctor has now been installed from DigitalOcean. All these commands that I'm going to be typing will be in the video description below, so you can just copy and paste them into your terminal window. The next command we're going to be typing is a command to make a directory called .config. So type the following command, mkdir space slash root slash Dot config. Once you've typed this in, hit enter on your keyboard and you'll create the directory. Now let's start the auth process by typing the following command, doctl or d-o-c-t-l space auth space init and then hit enter on your keyboard. Once you've typed this in, underneath it will say, please authenticate Doctil for use with your DigitalOcean account. You can generate a token in the control panel at, we've already generated our personal access token, so we won't need to do this again. And then underneath it says, enter your access token. So open back up the text editor or wherever you have saved your personal access token, highlight it, right click on it and click on copy to copy it, minimize your text editor and right click to paste. Then hit enter on your keyboard. It'll then begin validating your token and you'll see a check mark, which you can barely see actually in the terminal window, which means it has been validated. We're going to make another directory now, which is .kube. So type again the make directory command by typing mkdir space slash root slash dot K-U-B-E. Once you've typed this in, hit enter on your keyboard and then you'll create the directory. Next, we'll need to type the snap connect command for our Kubernetes config. So type snap space connect space D-O-C-T-L or doctil colon kube dash config. Once you've typed this in, hit enter on your keyboard. Now open back up your browser and copy the doctor Kubernetes cluster kube config save and then your cluster ID, which in my case starts with A5. So if I scroll down here and look for my cluster ID, which is right here, you can see it also starts with A5 just to confirm that it is my cluster ID. Okay, so copy this command by clicking on the copy icon and you'll copy this entire command here. Open back up your putty terminal window right click to paste and then hit enter on your keyboard. And as you can see, you get two green notices here. The first one saying adding cluster credentials to kube config file found in slash root slash dot kube slash config, which is the directory or folder that we made. Notice setting current dash text to the following Kubernetes cluster name. Great, so now we've done the authentication of our cluster and its credentials. We can now verify our connectivity. So open back up your browser and click on continue. So as you can see, we've now got step one, step two, and we're on step three now, which is verify connectivity. To verify connectivity to your cluster, run the series of commands listed below. So as you can see, you have two options. You can either run with kube CTL or DOCTL or doctl. This is the commands available on Kubernetes site. However, because this is a digital ocean Kubernetes cluster, I'm going to be rolling with doctl. So click on doctl commands. There's nothing stopping you running with kube CTL if you want. So let's start by running doctl Kubernetes. This will display a variety of commands that help manage your cluster via DigitalOcean's API. So I'm just going to highlight it 
it and I'm going to right click and click on copy. Open up your PuTTY terminal window and right click to paste, hit enter. And as you can see, it gives you a list of all the commands you can do with a doct or Kubernetes command. The usage is as follows, doct or Kubernetes and then your command. So I'm going to check on our Kubernetes cluster ID to verify if our Kubernetes cluster is running. So start off by typing the following command, doct or space Kubernetes space cluster space kube config space show space and then your cluster ID. So we're going to need to get a cluster ID from our DigitalOcean Kubernetes dashboard. So open back up your browser, scroll down until you see where it says cluster ID and click on the copy button here to copy it to your clipboard. Open back up your PuTTY terminal window and right click to paste. Again, just to reiterate, all these commands will be in the video description below. Press enter on your keyboard. And as you can see, we can see our Kubernetes cluster certificate. We can see the server, the name, the cluster name, and the personal access token. So this verifies our Kubernetes cluster. Now let's list our Kubernetes cluster. To do this, let's get a list of commands. So type doctor space Kubernetes space cluster. Once you've typed this in, hit enter on your keyboard. And then just like the doctor or Kubernetes command, you'll get a list of all the commands available for your doctor or Kubernetes cluster. So this time, instead of doctor or Kubernetes and then your command, instead it's going to be doctor or Kubernetes cluster and then your command. So you have the addition of cluster here. So the command we're going to be using is the list command. So just type doctor space Kubernetes space cluster space list. Once you've typed this in, hit enter on your keyboard. And then the terminal window will give you a list of your Kubernetes cluster, which as you can see, you only have one Kubernetes cluster. The name of your Kubernetes cluster is k8-test. The region is New York 1. This is the version of your Kubernetes cluster and the status is running and the node pool is called pool-k8-test. Great, so that's verification completed. So you can just open back up your browser, scroll up to the very top here to where it says continue to continue on to step four. And now we're on step Step four, which basically means we're finished. Our Kubernetes cluster is up and running. We've connected to it and we've verified our connectivity. Now all that's left to do is to deploy a workload or to deploy your app. You can do this here using DigitalOcean's recommendations, or you can scroll down to where you see where it says marketplace one-click apps, and then you can explore all the Kubernetes one-click apps available for your Kubernetes cluster. So you'll basically install the app onto your existing Kubernetes cluster. Now for this video demonstration, it's all about setting up your Kubernetes cluster and connected to it. However, in the next video, I'm going to be showing you how to install one of these marketplace apps available for DigitalOcean's Kubernetes clusters. I'll specifically be taking you through the process of installing WordPress onto your Kubernetes cluster and changing your name servers to DigitalOcean's custom DNS and then pointing your domain name to the installed app, which will be WordPress in my case. All right, so all that's left to do now is to click on great, I'm done. And that pretty much concludes this video on how to create Kubernetes K8 clusters on DigitalOcean. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, comment down below, and most importantly of all, subscribe to support the channel. I'll see you on the next video. Wait, is it so